Hello gamers, it's SoftKitty99 and today we're in the HGTV DLC for House Flipper. In today's episode I'd like to purchase one of the homes from the HGTV expansion, the Semi-Detached House. Now, when we did the client's job for it, we only worked on half of the house because it had been put into two small units. Now we get to work on both sides of it so we can decide whether to keep it as two separate units or knock it together into one big family home. So I think we're going to make a way between the two and turn it into a family home which I think will leave us with a two bedroom, two bathroom property and we've got a We'll have a double garage at the back, which I'll, we'll see if we can knock through between the two to make it one big open garage rather than two separate ones. So as you can see, we're going to need to do an awful lot of cleaning because it's got graffiti and dirt all over the outside of the house. So we're going to need to get the hose out and give that a good scrub to get all of that clean. It's going to be a pretty pink house. Uh, once we hose everything down outside, I think we'll keep it as the pink clapboard decor on the outside because in the game there are some clapboard siding sort of panels that you can add to the outside of the house but there aren't any with colour so I think we'll just give it a clean so we can keep it the pretty pink. Now inside, so this has been a big open plan living room dining area so I think we might remove the kitchen from this side and make this a great big huge living space. And I really don't think we're going to be able to rescue any of that furniture because it really looks pretty bad. There's already plumbing in there for a shower, so that will work out okay. It's not a bad space for a uh, bedroom in here. They've crammed tons of bedroom furniture in there though. So again, nothing to be saved. And down the back here, we've got that double garage. So you've got access to half of the garage from each side. There's lots and lots of junk to get rid of and sell in the back, so we'll need to sell all of that. And as I said, I'll try and see if we can knock down that wall between the two to make it a big open plan one. So let's sell this fence so we can open up access to both sides of the garden. We need to get rid of some bushes so we can get through this gap. So there's no path in the other half, so we'll probably have to add one there. So let's see how much junk we've got in here. Yeah, quite a lot, so we'll sell all of that. And then we'll see if that wall will come down. Let's take a look inside this half then. So a little tiny entryway here. A little bit awkward to get in and out with all the doors. So this was the kitchen, though there's not much kitchen there at all, is there? Yeah, I think the uh, building workers have been using that as a place to sit and eat, haven't they? So. Oh, this was a office space. Oh, that's quite a good idea, actually, an office space. Yes, we might do that. And that's a little, a little cupboard space, isn't it? We'll see if we can take those walls down. So when we did the client's job here, this cupboard, we knocked it through into the bathroom and made a walk-in shower. I think I might use that idea and do that again here while we're converting it for ourselves. And then this is going to be another big bedroom area. So that's the house. I think we'll knock through somewhere on this wall over here. And that was the house. So I'll come back once I've done it myself and show you what I've done. And welcome back to the semi-detached house. As you can see we've given it a nice clean on the outside, given it a good spray around and then we started working on the garden. So at the front here it came with these big pots so I've just added some fresh little flowers. So I've just added some white daffodil narcissi type flowers and then some little pink ones in between just to keep with the colour scheme of the house itself and just to brighten up the pots out the front just right here like that. Then over here we've added just a little splash of colour and then we've made a small seating area and we've used all of these ornamental and decorative grasses to make a little grass garden. So I've put down pebbles to make it kind of pebble beach style and then use the grasses as the decorative element. And I think that it's turned out really well and it's quite a nice way to use these grasses. And it's a very different style of garden. So you can come here and sit and relax 
and take a look at your decorative grasses. We've got lots of different colours, look, we've used all the different colours that are available to form this little grass garden nook over here. And I really like it. I did leave a fence in over here, but I have changed it to a different fence, to the white fence, which matches with these seats and just made it that little bit fresher. So if we come back to this side, I'll show you we've now got a flower garden over here. And I started with the pink theme from the house's colour itself and kind of ran with that. So I just added a little bit of accent colour. Everything all pink would have been very, very boring. So I started with the pink, added some darker pinks, a little bit of red. Then I went down to the, the bluer end, started with purple and then gone into various different shades of purple. And then this almost blue plant over here and the, the lilacs and the uh, various different heights of plants just to, to make this little flower garden over here. And then coming in this direction I thought it'd be really nice to use the ponds because I haven't used the ponds in any of my gardens so far and I also really wanted to use these decorative bridges. So I've grabbed some stepping stones and made a little path that links two little bridges over two ponds that leads us to the side entrance to the house. Every garden has to have a gnome so I've popped a couple in over here. See the bridge goes over the pond and then I've just added some fern type plants and hostas and things around the edges of the plant to make it look a little bit more of the sort of greenery that you would have near water. Added in a little rose at the back here, added a few stones in, the decorative owl Again, another stone and then a stepping stone to lead you to the second bridge. You can't quite link the ponds up but there's only just this little tiny gap which it's a shame you can't um, just touch the two together or have a type of plant that it could be put over the top to link the two. I've heard that people have managed to stick plants in but it's kind of bad litching the game and I, I really don't like to try and glitch it. I like to use the game as it's designed so that we can see what we can do with that. So that's what I've done. I've got I've got the same pond twice, so it comes round this way under this bridge and then goes under the edge of this bridge. And I, th I think it's turned out quite well because we've, we've not got a huge amount of space at the side of the house here, but I think it's, it's worked out quite well. Alright, so if we come over here again, a couple more stepping stones to lead us to the pathway and there's the side door to the house. I've added, added a little bit more colour here at the side and then some of the vines up against the fence just to break up all that brown fencing just so that it looks a little bit different. So this is what I've come up with and again I'm quite pleased with it. I like to try to use a little bit slightly different things here and there in the gardens and I'm not going to say I'm going to do all the gardens for all of the houses but I'm just having a bit of fun playing around with them as we go. So the path down the side here was originally in with the house. I've just added a little bit of seating here so that you can view the vines up the fencing and just so that you've got somewhere to sit and you can of course admire the view down that way as well. There isn't space for seating down there. I've added a barbecue over here and a picnic bench so that you can come out and do some grilling and have a picnic anytime you want and of course you've got that seat over there for extra space if there isn't enough space at your picnic table. Here of course we've got the garage so I did knock the fence down here between the two garages uh, but the middle wall inside the garage it wouldn't let me knock down so we've got, still got that in place but now you've got two separate garages I did want to knock it through to make it one big one but they wouldn't let us so we've kept it as two separate ones which if you change your mind later and wanted to turn these two semi-detached houses back into two separate rental units it wouldn't be that hard to separate them again you just have to put the fences back between the properties, as you can see the, the mark on the grass where we've removed it here, uh, and then the garage and everything is still separated. And in the house I've only made a, a small archway to walk through from one side to the other, so it would be easy to separate them again in the future. Down this side I've added a little bit of extra paving, couldn't quite match the one that we already had so I used this one as it was a fairly close match to make the pathway to the other side of the house and to this side of the garage. I've added some fruit trees down here. We've got plum and pear and 
cherry and apple. I just use one of each, I think. And then up here I've got a little garden full of veggies and fruits. So we've got some of the ribes over here and then uh, a grapevine and some black black currants and then I've got a few veggies over here and of course some strawberries but a few veggies most people will try and grow cabbages and carrots at some point we've also got some cucumbers and um, a few other extras we've got some more berries and then some tomatoes so just a little tiny garden for fruits and veggies down this side of the house and then the more decorative one at the other side and then the uh, grasses at the other side of this fence here so you don't actually have access to the back from the front here because I've decided to cut that off and make it two separate parts of the garden so if we come in here through the side door let's start taking a look at the house itself so I've got this big open plan living room space so I've kind of seen this is the main living room here in this side of the house um, this plant looks slightly different to me and I think the colouring is a little bit maybe too green on the light green. It looks slightly odd to me but um, it's still a really nice plant to pop in the house. I've got another plant over in this direction over here. Use the very long white curtains throughout and this room I've got the grey carpeting and then I've kept everything mostly white with little touches of grey around the edges for accents. So I've got a little bit of We've got the white over here, then we've got touches of grey in the carpet and then in the cushions on the sofa, here and here. And then we've got the white carpet with the grey lines in it. We've got the circular, slightly grey patterns on the feature wallpaper. Then we've got grey on the bottom of this big L-shaped sofa over here. And we've got grey legs on the tables and I've used that white framed sort of misty smoky morning grey tones of that painting over there and then this ab abstract paintings kind of got white and grey tones in it as well so it kind of matches and then for this inset window where we couldn't put curtains I've added the blinds with the circle wallpaper and then added the circle wallpaper again underneath the window to make this little feature nook where we've added another of the bookcases so We've also used one of the new chandeliers. That is it the Atom one? I think it's the Atom one over here. So this is our family lounging area. And I really like that. I think it's turned out very well. And this is where I've added the door into the other building. So if you did want to turn it back into two separate units, you've just got to remove one doorway and add a couple of fences outside. So I have kept both of the bathrooms so that the family has a little bit more choice. We've got a corner shower in here, a little toilet and a sink. And again, we've got little accents in grey because we've got the grey towel. We've got the white sort of marble defect tile in, which has got these little grey veins and patterns in it. And I've used the white, uh, the not the white on the floor, the brown the new brown tiling that's kind of variegated between very brown almost to shades of grey in some of these tiles if you look at it so use that for a very natural flooring to add a little bit of colour to the rest of it being white and grey and I, I like it as you can see I've tiled on all the walls in this bathroom just because tiles in bathrooms I really like that keeps them easy and with all the dampness from the misting in the air it not good on paintwork but fine on uh, tiling so well, let's take a look at the first of the bedrooms I kind of see this one as the master bedroom so I've used the red feature wall over there at the far end of the bedroom itself when I've used my favorite bed this has to be my favorite bed I use this everywhere as you already know so I've used the red bedspread here with the pale pink throw cover and I've used this sort of beigey creamy wavy line pattern on the pillows and then I've taken that colour as my accent colour it kind of matches the background of the red wallpaper it also matches these new bedside tables and we've used the lamps with the red shades to make them match the bed and then I've gone for a slightly darker tone of the brownie colour on the wall 
and then we've kept all the furniture in that sort of creamy wood to try and match it into the colour scheme that we've gone everywhere else and then the little accents of white and pink and red everywhere else including the carpet and the little box and then the bright red pop for the blinds at the windows and again I've used that abstract style of painting it's one of the new ones and I've used the white one here it has got little bits of the sort of beigey colour in it so I thought that would be the better one for the bedroom so that is my master bedroom and again I've used one of the new lamps on the ceiling over here the dangling crystal lampshade I really like that for a bedroom I think it's got that kind of look and feel to it so that is the master bedroom so that is this side of the house now completed so if we pop through the little door that connects us through so again we've got a bathroom right here this time we've got a bathtub in this one so this is the only bathtub in the house so you have got a space to come and relax and soak in a bath if you need it I haven't missed that out altogether use one of the new tile racks on the walls you can see we've used the same tiling along the walls over here and we've used the same sink in both of the bathrooms the same mirrors the same towels the same toilets here we've got a matching bathtub on the floor this time we've used a, the same sort of tiling that we have on the wall over here but I didn't think it was necessary to add the splash of colour to this one because what I've done is I've added the splash of colour here let's move that door out of the way into this alcove because this little alcove where we've extended the bathroom into this little cupboard area is where we've put our built-in shower and we've used the tinted doors you can see here so if we open that up you can see that inside this alcove where we've got the built-in shower I've actually added this blue white it's a bluish gray white tiling so we've had a little bit of color here and then we've tinted the glass to the aqua shades on the door for the shower so we've got that splash of color from this alcove so I didn't think we needed to make the floor to be such a big contrast here but I kind of like those built-in showers but you've got to be very careful with making sure that they actually fit into your spaces so they could be slightly awkward at some points right so the second bedroom this case I've made it into the blue room I was kind of thinking maybe a teenage boy or something or maybe their children have grown up and they're still living with them or something like that so I've used a blue as my colour for this one so I've used the blue wall for the accent with the flower blue wallpaper could even be granny if you look at the, the hat the family that has the granny with it this could even be granny's room or something though of course there aren't enough rooms for the children so this is just a two bedroom build this one it's meant for relaxing and having lots of space to live your life I've used the slightly darker tones for the wood here so I've kind of gone towards the greyish shades on the wood I've used again the new lamps here we've got the open decorative metal lamps on this one here and if you turn those on it adds these little bright patches Again, I've used the same bed, but we've used different colours. We've used the blue background and the white and cream shaded pillows and throw. To match the wallpaper, I've gone for a carpet that's got a blue background and got some flowers on it. We've used one of these new little poof sides, side table chair storage units I'm not quite sure what to call them to be honest they they're under like settees and thing and chairs and things but they, they look more like with these little tops on they look more like little poofs that you used to use to put your feet on or sit on when you know, we were younger and stuff but this has got storage in it underneath so it's kind of a multi-purpose piece of furniture isn't it you've got storage you've got somewhere you can sit so I'm not quite sure what you should call these <laughs> I don't know if there's a proper name for them but I just don't know what exactly to call them so I'm going to call them poofs because they remind me of that sort of uh, piece of furniture that my mum had when we were little and then I've used the seaside picture on the wall to add a little splash of colour and because it's got this big blue open sky and this big blue splash of 
see it just matches the color scheme so we've got the dark slightly darker blue on all the walls and of course i've used the feature wallpaper again in the alcove added a chest of drawers in there and i've used the pale blue blinds at the windows over here and then another pa painting on this side and i've used that spiral ribbon like chandelier to finish off this room so from this direction this is what we look like and then if we come to the opposite side over here you can see what I've done in this side and so that is the second and final bedroom for our semi-detached house which has suddenly become two houses put together. I've left the dividing wall in this build because what I've decided to do is make a small functional kitchen kind of thought that the people in this house only cook to fuel the body they're not dedicated chefs or anything so they're just going to need the basics for a kitchen so we've got a nice big fridge for keeping all your fresh goods we've got our cooker with a little hood to extract the smoke and steam and stuff I've gone for the grey cabinets again in keeping with much of the things we've got everywhere else I've gone for the grey tinged floor I've got the white and grey carpet as a runner just to stop you slipping on the wooden floors. Added a few little decorative elements with tea, coffee and sugar pots and a teapot. A few herbs, a few hanging units. Quite a simple little kitchen. We've got everything you need but we've not gone overboard. Uh, and then in this little alcove towards the access to the garden again so we come out here by the ponds and the seating area and behind this door here we have somewhere to hang your coats and check your appearance before you leave for your day. So if we come back into the house itself, we've got a clock up on the wall here and we divide the room by changing the colour where the wall is to divide the two spaces and in the front section I've got an office space. You could also use it as a, a reading nook because we've got space to keep books but I've kind of decided it's an office space so we've got the blue flowered wallpaper again over here with a clock and a big corner office chair to be able to do lots and lots of work because I'm kind of imagining somebody either works from home or maybe they're a writer or something and they work at home. We've got the pale blue blinds again at the window. Yeah and here I've got a nice big space for storing your books or documents. Again we've used these pretty little plants to add a little bit of a decorative colour. I really like this door, this new door, I really like that. Add some shorter blue curtains here this time more space for adding books over here and then a very big soft comfy place to, to sit and relax and read your books and uh, maybe hang out with your people maybe even hold business meetings and things a uh, little coffee table with the again a blue rug this time we use the square abstract design type of rug and we've got a seaside painting again this time we're going for the rocks and cliffs in front of the beach and another one of these new fancy lampshades this is kind of a an atom type one with all the little dangling crystals inside it so this is the seating section for the office space and here's your office space itself so that is my tour of the semi-detached house the way i decided to do it i thought we'll keep it fairly simple and we'll make only that one door over here between the two buildings so that the person, if they were renting it out, could always swap it back if they really wanted to. Or a person who purchased the house could always close that door off, live in one side and get some income from renting out the other. So give the options and let them keep the options. So we're going to sell the house and we're going to see the before and after pictures. So we bought the house for 99000 and we have worked on it for ooh, five hours. That's a lot of time. I suppose we did quite a bit in the garden as well as inside the house. So it took us quite a long time. So let's see what the people think about the house. So yeah, no, the family would definitely not be buying it because there just aren't enough rooms in it for a family of that size. I'm kind of thinking it'll be a couple of people. Oh, the Smoth family bought it. That's interesting. I was thinking maybe the Jantarts would, would be more likely to have it, but of course it's a little bit too big for them, so that's why they're not quite so happy about it. And the Smoths 
are quite happy with the way it's turned out so that is the house the way that I chose to do it so let's take a look at the before and after pictures as you can see before it did, really was very very sad and needed a lot of love and oh look at the difference in that I really like that so yeah I think it's worked out really really well I hope that you've got some sort of inspiration for your own from that oh yeah I've, we've made a big huge improvement to that it all looks so good oh yeah it's, it's really satisfying to see the before and after pictures because it just reminds you of what it was before and what it is now. So I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. From SoftKitty99, goodbye and happy gaming!